Before the video begins, make sure you've subscribed to see more natural history content like this. Hit the bell icon to keep yourself in the loop and leave a comment if you feel like it. Brand new designs are up on the Edge Redbubble. Werewolves, spiders, FedEx amphibians, protocrocs, and more. Go check out the Redbubble with links in the description and comment section below. The Paleozoic Seas were an amazingly diverse and bizarre place compared to today's oceans. In fact, the oceans have changed their roster many times over the last 600 million plus years, with various major groups going out with new evolutionary adaptations. But the Paleozoic Seas were usually always ruled by an army of different hard-shelled organisms, whether that be the funny long-tongued brachiopods, the sessile tentacle-bodied crinoids, or two-shelled bivalves. Something happened after the Great Dying that forced these guys to change course or face extinction, and many of them faced that dark abyss in the process. Welcome to the Mesozoic Marine Revolution. Originally coined by Dutch professor of geology at UC Davis, Giret J. Vermeij, based on work done by Stephen Stanley, the Mesozoic Marine Revolution describes the rapid adaptation of marine animals to a lifestyle of shell-crushing and shell-boring predation throughout the Mesozoic era. There is some evidence that this sort of onslaught on hard-shelled organisms began a little earlier than the Mesozoic, during the later parts of the Paleozoic. I wouldn't doubt it since things usually always take way longer and are way more transitional than the fossil record would tell us. But for now, we'll restrict the general time frame of this evolutionary revolution to the Mesozoic era. This sort of multi-million year evolutionary arms race resulted in a complete turnover of the usual fauna that populated the world's oceans. There were a ton of sessile hard-shelled critters covering most of the ocean, and then they had to adapt to fast-moving predators with iron jaws to crush them. During the Triassic period, this resulted in the explosion of diversity of marine reptiles. The technique of crushing hard-shelled critters began here and was perfected by the late Cretaceous before going extinct again in the KPG extinction. Back in the Triassic, there were the barrel-bodied sea lizards, the placodonts, as well as the first crop of the ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs. A weird offshoot of the ichthyosaur group developed a mosasaur-like body plan. These were the omphalosaurs. However, they were equipped with crushing teeth. Let's look at placodonts real quick. Placodonts were extremely weird. They came in two major flavors, big chonky manatee lizards, and the world's first attempt at sea turtles. Taking a look inside their mouths is the only thing you need to see to tell you the hard-shelled critters were majorly screwed. Instead of normal teeth, the placodonts had large, flat, stone-like teeth they smashed against one another to snap their prey's bodies to pieces before sloshing them down their gullets. No one was safe. Not the feather duster crinoids, the brachiopods, bivalves, nor the echinoids. The Jurassic saw the diversity of ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs continue, but the extinction of the placodonts and amphalosaurs. Short-necked forms of plesiosaurs split off from their ancestral stock. These were the pliosaurs, and many of them joined the anti-shell cause. Then the Cretaceous came, and so did the mosasaurs and tychodontid sharks, both of which took the pavement jaws of the placodonts and ramped them up to 11. They were very good at getting things crushed. Another influence on the evolution of these durophagus, or crushing, animals may have been the evolution of hermit crabs during the Cretaceous period. Hermit crabs doubled the lifespan of the shell they used and would provide shell-munching monsters twice as many prey opportunities. That sounds like a win-win in my book. Obviously, this had a major effect on the ecologies of the world's changing oceans. Specifically, it resulted in a change from sedentary animals that lived their lives at the surface of the ocean bottom to animals that lived their lives within the sediment on the ocean bottom. There were definitely animals doing both before and after this event, 
but it was this event that jump-started a massive change in a large number of animal groups. Some of these above-the-seabed animals also adapted to living a planktonic lifestyle. That is, a critter that is free-floating and allows the current to move it. Brachiopods were particularly affected, which is reflected in how few living ones remain today. They couldn't reattach themselves to the sea bottom if they got thrown about by predators, which made them easy pickings. Those critters that could hide or escape had the advantage. All of this resulted in three major evolutionary trends among marine critters. A. A huge reduction in creatures that lived on the sediment surface and fed by catching floating bits of nom noms. B. A huge increase in critters that bury most of or all of their bodies beneath the sea bottom. And C. A bunch of critters that lived at the surface of the sea bottom that could move around more easily. I've noted the groups that were majorly affected by the marine predators, but how did they change to overcome their arms race? Gastropods. The gastropods are the guys that now include snails, slugs, and stuff. Back in the Mesozoic, the weak-shelled ones died out or moved to isolated habitats. The Paleozoic forms of the Archaeogastropoda group were replaced by the tougher Neritasians, Mesogastropods, and Neogastropods. The old guys had an umbilicus, which is the cone-shaped space in the center of the shell that the shell is essentially coiling around. The new guys got rid of this, and their coil kinda coils onto itself, which made them stronger. On top of that, they adapted a way to modify the outside of their shells to sport all sorts of nasty bumps, ruffles, and serrations to give them a very slicey mouthfeel. In a reverse UNO scenario, some of these shelled invertebrates joined in on the shell demolishing game. Instead of crushing though, they adapted their mouth parts to bore a hole straight through the shells of other gastropods to slurp out their insides. Crinoids Crinoids are the near superfluous forms of life of the Paleozoic era seas. They are called sea lilies because they look like big floating flowers. Go figure. They anchored themselves to the environment and just sat there filtering out yummy bits from the water. They were hit hardest by the revolution, with almost the entire group going extinct before the KPG extinction. Those that survived were those that could move, like the feather stars still in our seas today. Those that developed nocturnal habits and could just drop body parts at the drop of a hat were also able to slide through the onslaught of the marine reptiles. Even though nearly all of the sedentary forms went extinct, some survived by migrating to deeper waters where air breathers couldn't frequent. Brachiopods Brachiopods were the dominant shelled creatures of the sea bottom throughout the Paleozoic, but quickly became the lunch of those pesky sea dragons. In the sorry case of the brachiopods, they couldn't adapt to live under the sea bottom like most bivalves could, and kinda just went extinct, save for a very unusual and very small group of brachiopods that were able to live in the sediment using a really weird technique. Bivalves Bivalves were affected rather differently than the other groups. During the late Paleozoic and into the Mesozoic, they were diverse in the many ways of living. There were both lots of bottom-dwelling forms and those that lived under the sediment. The ones affected most by the revolution were those that lived atop the sediment. To cope, some groups adapted their bodies to fuse to the substrate. Those were the mussels and oysters. They're nearly impossible to pry off their living space. The ones that didn't were eaten. Another group, the scallops, developed an escape mechanism wherein they flip-flop a short distance if disturbed before burying themselves. Echinoids Echinoids are the sea urchins. Since they already developed a way to move around and a bodysuit of armor and spines, they weren't as affected by the revolution as everyone else was. Some fossilized vomit does show that sea urchins were eaten by marine predators, but their numbers don't show any significant decline. In fact, some may have contributed to the decline of other groups, like the crinoids, as they developed coral grazing habits. The Triassic was an interesting time for life on Earth. While the synapsid rulers of old were being phased out for the Archosaurian relay racers, a whole nother exchange of evolutionary stock was occurring in the seas. Reptiles were finding the bountiful fruit of the oceans too tantalizing to not take advantage of. And the rest is prehistory.
For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks goes to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, Chris Frampton, Biotaverse, Arda Bayer, and Christoph Hubbinger, as well as my Tyrannosaur patrons, Iron Bladesman, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.